Hello FlossTube, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. So it is a special edition of Floss Tube today. This is Wednesday, October 25th, 2023, and I am here with a pillow finish parade. I spent quite a lot of time uh, digging through my finish drawer this last weekend and doing some pillow finishing. So I'm very, very excited to um, share all of those with you. This is not going to be my kind of traditional format of floss tube in that I share like whips and things. I don't have any, <laughs> uh, but it will follow it will follow my format as in I'm just going to show you my finishes. I do have uh, one haul item. I have my sub sampler that I'm going to unbox for you guys and some things like that. We will do giveaways today. So it is a floss tube. It's just going to be a little bit different in that I don't have any whips. So let's flip the camera around and I cannot wait to show you guys what all I have been working on. Okay, let's talk FFOs first. Um, I did five pillows. I think I just mentioned that. Um, we're going to start with my Stitch Tober pillow, and then we'll do my other fall pillows, and then Halloween and Christmas. So starting off, this is my pillow finish for the Lori Holt Stitch Cards R. I'm stitching along with that quarter shop for Stitchtober and I got mine all finished. These stitch up so super fast, you guys. So, so fast. So I stitched three of the four cards. I stitched the pumpkin, scarecrow, and crow. I didn't stitch the sunflower because I knew when I um, figured out my text, which I know I talked about in my last floss tube, that this was going to fit my design the best. So I picked my three favorites. Then I used the free alphabet from Fat Quarter Shop. It's called I'm Just Saying Cross Stitch. I will have a link to that down in the description below. Um, and I just figured out a phrase, figured out my spacing and stitched Harvest Joy and Gratitude. I could not love this more. I stitched on 36 count Hazelwood by Fiber on a Whim, one strand over two using my own color conversion. To finish my pillow, what I did was I knew I wanted to go with the Lori Holt vibe, <laughs> like vibe, if you will. So what I did was I took um, 18 one and a half inch squares of Lori's fabrics. And I pulled all of these fabrics, if I'm not mistaken, from Calico and B Basics. And I did link to Fat Quarter Bundles that these fabrics are all from down in the description box below. I cut 18 one and a half inch squares. I sewed them all together into this little patchwork and I, I sewed them together into long rows and I pressed the seams one direction, then the other, and then back so that the seams would nest. And then these long seams I pressed open so that it would lay nice and flat. Once I had this panel, my top panel, I stitched Lori Holt's Pumpkin Vintage Trim. This is red. I did not pull the pumpkin spool out, but it looks just like this. Um, I love her vintage trims. I stitched a piece of the pumpkin vintage trim to my stitch. I like to draw a little line. I stitch my rickrack in place. Then with front to front, I stitched my patchwork to this piece. 
I made sure that I liked how it all looked when I opened it all up. I trimmed the excess and then I folded that rickrack trim towards my patchwork and pressed it. And that was the front of my pillow. Once I had the front of my pillow, I sewed the front to another piece of Lori Holt fabric. I just picked the one that I liked for this finish. I stitched them, I left an opening in the bottom, and I did a little, or I stuffed it with a combination of polyester fiber, fiber fill and poly pellets. Um, when I do that, I what I have found that I'm liking the best is I am stuffing my pillow with poly fill first to get the corner shape. I found if I did poly pellets first, the corners wouldn't look as good. So I stuff those corners with polyester fiber fill and I stuff it probably almost completely full. Let's say one or two handfuls of poly fill less. Then I take a funnel and my poly pellets and I dump a bunch in there and I squish them all around. And then I put a cup, those last two handfuls of polyester fiber fill in and I ladder stitch this shut. And it may not be the nicest. I will even show you guys, um, it's fine. <laughs> this sits down in the bottom. You don't see it that much. It's it's secure and that's all I'm going for there. I like a clean back for the most part. So I have found that I kind of prefer just doing a ladder stitch in the bottom. Once I have it uh, all secure, I wrap some green twine that I had in my stash around my pillow. And then I use this wood button that I picked up from Amazon to finish. And I did link to that button as well. And that is my pillow. Now I will say that I can feel the poly pellets now in the corner because they shift. So they're gonna shift around a lot. And this one has quite a lot of poly pellets. It has some weight, kind of bean baggy feel <laughs> to it. It would need a few more poly, uh, ester, uh, or poly pellets, pardon me, to really be a bean bag, but I love it. So that is my finish for the Lori Holt stitch card R using Lori Holt fabric for uh, my patchwork on the bottom. Now, I have to say, you guys, I wanna do this for other seasons. Imagine this same design with some of Lori's Christmas stitch cards or you know, even some of her charts that have that same size. You could pick those. You could do a Christmas phrase. You could do a Christmas patchwork. I really think that I want to try to fit that into my Christmas plans because that would be cute. She has Halloween cards. If you wanted to stitch up some of her Halloween cards with a fun little phrase and do a Halloween patchwork, you could really do this in a lot of different seasons. And I think I'm going to try to uh, incorporate some of those into my future stitching plans because I think it would be really, really fun. Valentine's Day. Easter, I mean summer, patriotic, all the things. You could really take this idea and run with it. So um, hopefully that inspires you, maybe makes you think about her stitch cards. I know for me personally, I was trying to come up with a way, something different to do with them, and I couldn't love this more. So that is my finish for my Stitchtober Lori Holt stitch cards. Okay, let's talk about probably the oldest finish that I had in my stash, which is this Fat Quarter Shop Autumn Beauties. This was a mystery stitch along, I believe in 2021. Obviously it's not a mystery anymore. You can buy the PDF and stitch this. It is so pretty. When I was stitching this, I was brand new back to stitching from a mini year hiatus for the most part. And I stitched this on 14 count oatmeal Ada using the called for classic color works over dyed threads, two over or two strands over one since it's Ada. And this is my finish or finish stitching of that. Um, I love it. This was probably my first time stitching uh, with over dyed floss. So that's kind of a fun memory as well. Part of my stitching story, which is something I think is kind of fun. 
if it, I was stitching this today, would I choose linen? Yes. But am I going to redo it? No. I love that it's part of my stitching story and it's beautiful. It really is pretty. And the size is fun. I think tucked into, you know, a beautiful display, it's fun to have some different sizes. So this was, again, it's a pretty good size pillow. When I was thinking how I wanted to finish it, I wanted to do it sort of simple. Now, originally, I thought it would be fun to stitch fabric um, on the sides and then on the top and the bottom and maybe size this to fit like a standard throw pillow, like a 14, 16, 18 type throw pillow. But I laid out my fabric and I was looking at it. I always like to kind of lay things out. I didn't like it. I It was too big. I didn't feel like that's kind of the look I wanted. So I got to looking in my stash and I noticed I had this Lady Dot Creates Velveteen in paper whites. Well, I actually pulled out several colors, but paper whites was the winner. And I ended up, because it was big enough, and I even out of a package, I still have a little bit left, enough to do like a top of a drum or a little pillow back or something like that. I use that for the back of my pillow. So I know you can't see it here or you can't feel it on camera, but it's so velvety soft. I love that for the backing of my pillow. I stitched the front to the front of my velveteen, turned it inside out, did a ladder stitch, which of course is nice when you're adding a trim because it hides it. Um, ladder stitched it shut. I did fill it just with poly ester fiber fill. I did, okay, I'm, and here's full disclosure. I did fill this with polyester fiber fill and poly pellets. It took a ton of both and I didn't care for it. So I actually ripped my ladder stitch out, dumped all the poly pellets out, filled it really good with polyester fiber fill, re-stitched it, and then I added some Lady Dot Creates bare chenille trim around the edges. And I whip stitch mine in place. You could also glue it in place with like some Aileen's tacky glue if you wanted to. I just personally, I just take about, it takes about 45 minutes maybe to an hour and I whip stitch it in place. I don't mind doing that. And it, it's just another texture thing for me. I love the velveteen on the back and then that chenille texture. It's just a beautiful, simple finish. So I have linked to the PDF for this down below if anybody is interested. This is one of my favorite mystery stitch along charts that Fat Quarter Shop has done. And obviously it's no longer a mystery. So if you see this and you like it, you wanna stitch it, I think it would be fantastic. And that is my second pillow finish. All right. Let's talk Halloween and then we'll do Christmas. You guys, this is one of probably my second most recent finish. This is the Boo Chart from Hello from Liz Matthews. This was stitched on 36 count Mystic Owl by Color and Cotton, one strand over two, using the called four threads, However, they're not in the called for order and I'm okay with that. This chart first was released from last year's Primitive Stitcher and Punch Needle magazine and there was some boo-boos in the chart and I didn't know the corrections until I was kind of too far into this. So I just kind of winged it and went for it. But Liz has made this chart now available so you can purchase it. It's one of my favorites. It stitches up fast. It's so stinking cute. You can see he's just the little guy. I used a scrap of Fig Tree Quilts uh, fabric from my scrap bin for the back, stitched them front to front, turned it out through the bottom, ladder stitched it close, and then I added some of the licorice lady dot creates chenille trim around the edges i just love this stuff love 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 it i whip stitched it in place using um, a black 
a black um, thread, pardon me, can't think of words, words are hard. Uh, and that was my finish. Super, super simple, uh, cute. I cannot wait to add this in to my Halloween bowl of pillows and things. It's just absolutely adorable. Anyway, so that is my Halloween finish with the Boo from Hello from Liz Matthews. Christmas. Okay, first let's talk Sleigh Bells Ring by Cherry Hill Stitchery. This was a companion stitch piece from my Christmas in July sal where we did the sled uh, wood finish. And I had picked two charts as companion charts. This is one, Sleigh Bells Ring. The other one is Rudolph's Reindeer Games, which I'm still working on finishing and I will have as a finish to use as decor this year. I stitched this on 28 count vintage country mocha using two strands over two with my own color conversion. That conversion can be found in any of my Stitch With Me videos for that Christmas in July sled sow. I stitched this up um, just like I did with my stitch cards are. I stitched a piece of vintage trim on here and this time I used Riley Red. This is another of the large Lori Holt vintage trims. I stitched it to this Bonnie and Camille woven fabric from Merry Little Christmas. Now this is a year or two old, maybe just a year old. So it's a little getting a little harder to find. I did link to a layer cake of the wovens that I found at Fat Quarter Shop down in the description because you could do pillow finishes with a layer cake. And I actually used wovens for this and my next Christmas finish from the same collection. But I love it and yes, it did here. It did kind of meet up the stripe met up. You would think I would have meant to do that and I didn't, but I'm super happy it did because I it it, met, it meets up pretty close anyway. I'm pretty happy with that. But after I stitched this vintage trim on, I stitched this little piece to this, trimmed off my excess, flipped it over, pressed my vintage Rick Rack trim or the vintage trim away from my stitch, stitched the front to the back. And this time before I stuffed it through the corner of each, I actually stitched a rusty jingle bell to the corner of my pillow. And you might be saying, oh my gosh, rusty jingle bells. That doesn't bother me at all for this, but if that is something that would scare you, I would totally use some of the jingle bells that have a finish to them or that are sealed, but I just love it. I did link to these down in the description below, but what I did was I went through the corner of each pillow with my needle in. I came through the rusty jingle bell, back through the corner of my pillow, and then I tied it into a knot to secure to each corner. And I wanted to use Jingle Bells because I love them for the theme of this pillow. Plus, I just love the Jingle Bell look. I thought they were such a fun, interesting finish. I stuffed it uh, with polyester fiber fill and poly pellets, ladder stitched it shut. Yes, it's not the best job, but again, when it's sitting, no one sees it, so I'm okay. Uh, when I was finished, I took a little natural twine, wrapped it around, and tied it into a bow. I just feel like singing jingle bells now. So that is finish number four. Okay, finish number five is With Thy Needle and Thread Cup of Christmas Cheer. And this I started kind of in that funny week between Christmas and New Year's <laughs> where you don't know what day it is. I started this last year and then I was almost finished. Like I stitched on this 
stitch, 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 but then I had like lots of fill in and I left it in my bag forever. And here a few weeks ago, I know I showed this in a floss tube, I filled it all in and finished. So this is stitched on 28 count light taupe Lugana, two strands over two using all the called for floss, which was a combination of DMC and overdyed. It's mostly DMC if I'm not mistaken. And I did a pillow finish again, obviously, but I used another one of those, or a piece of the woven fabric from Bonnie and Camille, Merry Little Christmas. And this is that nice little red and white window pane. I stitched them front to front, left an opening, ladder, filled it with poly and some poly pellets, ladder stitched it shut. And then this is very similar to Brenda Gervais' finish. I did do a rickrack trim all the way around. This time I used the Lori Holt Small Cloud Rickrack. So here is a size difference between her large and small rickrack. I love them. I have a whole huge collection of colors and I'm always glad I do because it's nice to um, be able to pull from these when doing some finishing. And I whip stitched this in place. I'm not sure if you can even really see it. I'm going to hold it up here close. That's the goal. You don't really want to. I have done rickrack in a couple of ways, but I really like how this worked for the small trim. I actually pulled it out twice. I didn't like how it was looking. So I whip stitched it, but this time instead of finishing at the bottom, which is what I normally do, I finished up here at the top. And that's because I wanted to add a little ribbon up here at the top. Now you can see that mine is not even glued in place. I may eventually glue it, I don't know. But I use some Stitching with the Housewives red gingham ribbon from Fat Quarter Shop. I used Chantal of 141 Design bow making tool to make my bow and a Just Another Button Company snowflake pen through the center as a deck as a decorative finishing touch. Now, one of the only things left to do, and you may notice it, I don't think I brought it in here. Uh, for, in Brenda's finish, she uses a felt pom pom right here. Now you don't have to. It looks super cute just like this. I actually didn't have a pom pom in the correct size. So I will be adding a little pom pom here. I, I have them on order, but I didn't think I needed to hold off sharing it until I had that pom pom, but I will add that little pom pom detail when I get it. And that is pillow number five. And here is a look at all five of my pillow finishes. So much fun. I had a blast putting all of these together. So I do want to show one free chart that I found. This is a freebie from Emily Call Stitching and it is adorable. This would even make a super cute pillow finish. I, she did it kind of in a little flat finish here like a little on a little hanger. So, so adorable. So you can find this um, on her Facebook page, I will link to this down below, but I did wanna share this because it is something that I found. I only have one piece of haul to share today in my video. This is the new book from Teresa Kogut called Hello Autumn, and I absolutely 100% love this book. So I am going to show you the stitches in the book, but I need to be careful about the charts. So obviously there's this front piece. Let me, I just wanna show when you get her books, I know I've shown before, the artwork in them is incredible. She always uh, puts in a little bits of her artwork. So let me, the first chart is the chart on the front. Um, I'll have to be creative with this. There is harvest. Look at that cute scarecrow in front of all of those sunflowers. Love that. And 
and her books are amazing. The charts are in color um, and the they're big. Here is the Folksy Thomas, the turkey. How fun is that for your Thanksgiving stitching? I love it. We've got Harvest Ted and Harvest Tina. Little pumpkin heads. We have this autumn stitch. Kind of cute, that's a nice little small. We have Sunflower Sam, which I love. And then I think there's one more. There's Autumnal Bliss, which look at that fun little pillow. Isn't that cute? I love the pumpkins stacked on the house. So again, this is the Hello Autumn book from Teresa Kogut. This is a beautiful book, a fantastic edition. And I know I probably won't get anything finished from this this year, but I want to stitch several of these for next year, for sure. I absolutely love this. Okay, I also wanted to do an unboxing of the October Sew Sampler from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I, I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, this is my favorite, I think, uh, sew sampler box. It is so good. I know at the time of me filming this, there are a few a la carte boxes available. Plus you can get the finishing kit for the quilt that you can make with this. I would say jump on it if you like the collection I'm gonna show you that's inside. So, when you open it up, it is always always packaged beautifully. There's always a coupon code on the back of this, which I can't share with you. That's for the, the person who ha gets the box. Um, so this is all you need is love. I'm going to move that out of the way. And then you always get a little card telling you what is inside. And then the retail price of everything. So this is instructions which I'll show in a minute. Let's talk about the fabric because that's always the focal point. You get three charm packs of Lighthearted from Camille Ross Kelly. Lighthearted is one of my favorite collections. I have some yardage in a fat quarter bundle, but I love this. So they always have like a pattern that you can make in the kit that is exclusive to the kit and this time it's the heart and soul pattern which was designed by Lisa Alexander and this is what I believe the finishing kit is on the back of the pattern it does tell you it tells you what you need uh, and then the like how much binding or if you need backing or whatever in this case you don't need backing and then how or yes you do need backing background uh, so it tells you how much binding and how much for backing to make that heart quilt. Super cute. I'm not going to use this, but I am going to use these to make a quilt, which I will talk about when I, I ordered some stuff, and I'll show that when it comes. But that is absolutely adorable. I'll probably offer my pattern as a giveaway at some point, because you could do this with any fabric collection. You also get one of this June Taylor tote kit. And it tells you what all you need to make this. And then there's the instruction sheet. But this is super cute. I may try to make one of these one of these days. They did a zipper pouch, mm, if not last month, the month before, uh, which was really adorable as well. These are really, really fun kits. So you get that, which I thought was amazing. You could use yardage. You don't have to use a charm pack. Got this month's pressed flowers quilt, 
which is like a year long. E in each sew sampler box, you get the block instructions for that month's block. I um, have all of mine saved. Those will be stitched eventually. And then you guys, look at this cute, lighthearted rainbow charm you get in the box. So if you want to sew up a little project bag or whatever, you could attach this to that as a fun little zipper pull, any little bag that you make. So this is, oh, I almost forgot. And then you get, this is a seam width gauge, which I thought was really interesting. So there's the half inch, three eighths, quarter inch, and five eighths inch. Really, really interesting little gauge. I kind of like it. Neat little tool, little notion. So this is the sew sampler box for October. And again, I thought it was fabulous. <laughs> if you have been thinking about it, uh, it like I said, there's some a la carte boxes left. If you aren't part of the subscription, you might want to try it out. I think it is absolutely amazing. And thank you again for fat to a fat quarter shop for sending that. Let's do some giveaways. So I have not heard from floss tube 61 i have not heard from i lied from floss tube 59 i announced the winner in last the last floss tube the stitch quarterly goes to joyce sidwell so definitely check my last video um if you're joyce and give me uh email down below and let me know that you are the winner so i can get that sent out to you if I don't hear from you by my next floss tube or a week, probably, I will pick a new winner from that video. Okay, so from floss tube 60, I have I had three giveaways and I have chosen three winners, winners using the random comment picker and I had you guys leave keywords. So the first one was the Stitching with the Housewives bundle where you used the word month. If you use the word month in your comment, you win November, August, and September charts. This one has the floss. And then I had some of the pale gray gingham fabric. And the winner of this is Linda Smith. Linda, if this is your comment, please email me at the email address down below. The next bundle I had were new charts from Fat Quarter Shop. We have the Autumn Days Ornaments and then the fall, Happy Fall Simply Sign. The winner of this bundle is Lori Butler. I had you use the word fall. If you use the word fall, Lori, this was you. E please email me at the email down in the description. And finally, my last bundle from Floss Tube 60 was the Cuckoo Chart. And then this, I can't ever remember, 25 count oatmeal fabric. And the word was Cuckoo. And the winner is Sally Dixon. Congratulations, Sally. Okay, everybody. Those are the giveaway winners. I have five giveaways this week. We are going to stick with the keyword. I think that works really well. Sorry, the glare is just going to drive me crazy. Uh, all I can see is the glare. Please like the video. Please be a subscriber. Please be a U.S. resident. Please be over 18. I do have to ask for your mailing address. And don't use the words like giveaway or prize or things like that. Use the keywords. I will have the keywords along the bottom of the screen. Somewhere in your comment, you, you can be as creative or uncreative as, as you want to. And with that being said, oh, you have until November 3rd 
2023 at 8 a.m. Central to leave your comment to be considered for these giveaways. So, number one, or number one, for, or the first giveaway is the Autumn Doodles from Heart in Hand. These were all generously donated by a viewer. Thank you so much for sharing these with us. Um, use the word doodles if you would like the Heart in Hand Autumn Doodles. Also, the amazing Silver Creek Samplers Flying Lesson that we just finished our last sale with. If you would like this chart, please use the word flying somewhere in your comment. Next, we have Primrose Cottage Bundle of Autumn Rules and Welcome Autumn. If you would like these charts, use word primrose somewhere in your comment and I will send those, or I'll pick a winner and send those out. Next, we have Luminous Fiber Arts, a turkey's thanks. Please use the word turkey somewhere in your comment. And Twin Peak Primitives Stitching Autumn. I think those spools are so cute. So somewhere in your comment, use the word spool. And those are our five giveaways for this week. So thank you guys so much for spending some of your day with me. I hope you all have a wonderful uh, stitchy weekend coming up since this is a midweek edition. I will be back with like more regular floss tube where I'll share updated quilting progress and also with progress. So until then, uh, happy stitching everyone. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.